Hey, what's up YouTube, Dobas Yola here. Hope you're having a dope ass day. Welcome back to the channel. January 6th of this year, Marty and I did the TED Talk here downtown in LA. Coolest opportunity ever, the dopest, I, still shocking. By the way, out of 180,000 speeches, there's only been less than 10 duos, and Marty and I are the first duo podcast to ever be on TED Talk. It's pretty cool from doing Merced Packs and all that to talking about it on stage to like, a business mindset. It was very awesome, guys. Thank you so much for allowing us to have this opportunity just by supporting. So with that being said, guys, if you go right now to TEDx Talks, TEDx Talks, there's almost 40 million subscribers on. It's just the craziest thing I've ever seen. Like we're talking about how I used to be trapping it out to make content to now doing businesses and getting it's just it's, it's weird. And on Marty's end, straight from Buffalo, doing his music thing, then he realized he has to start over, has to do it again. Me and him were on the opposite sides of the country, going through the same up and downs. It's crazy. But 10 years later, we met guys. That's how the Dope As Usual podcast was made. So right now, go to TEDx Talks on YouTube. Here's the thumbnail, boom, right there. It's called Make Content and Career with Thomas Araujo, Dope As and Marty O'Neill, which is the craziest. It's on the website. It's on there. We are verified on TED Talk. It's a weird feeling, guys. It's very awesome. I was just smoking bowls, so this is awesome. Also, for everyone out there that's a fan of the Dope As Usual podcast, do me a favor. Every week, Marty and I are trying to give back a one-of-one -on -one poster. Maybe it's a picture of the guest and they sign it, or it's a bunch of merch, or maybe it's like a $500 gift card to push trees. We don't know what we're doing, but every week, all you gotta do is leave a comment on the newest episode. That's it. We're gonna try to do them every week, guys, but just make sure to follow right here. This is our podcast, Dope As Usual Podcast. Follow that, that's gonna give you all information, all updates. Also, this is our Twitter right there, and of course, the YouTube right here, and don't forget the Clips channel. Clips channel, we're remonetizing because YouTube is being a hater, but we're remonetizing, we're gonna get that back on track. So, sorry for that long winded ass uh, intro, but this is it, guys. I just wanted to tell you, this is what we have. It's, we're doing this intro now, and then all we have is BTS. Me and Marty were studying, going over our stuff, so our homie Trent just filmed whatever he filmed. Just basically BTS of the entire night. And then right after that, guys, we did basically a book on tape. So me and Marty did our entire speech into high quality microphones or headphones, just like back at our studio. Because the TED Talk's live, it's on stage, sometimes the mic wasn't working perfectly, or maybe people were clapping over a word, or you know what I'm saying? We want to make sure that you guys hear every word, the emphasis, the feeling. This is what the words that we wanted to say for beta. So this is our version of our TED Talk. This is word for word, our speech, what we wrote out, every meaningful word that we wanted you guys to hear. So like I said, go to TEDx Talks and watch their version of the TED Talk. It's awesome. I really appreciate you guys. But with that being said, this is our version. This is our TED Talk. This is us. So guys, thank you for letting us be here, making it possible, supporting our channel. Remember we were just rolling joints, doing tutorials, 30 packs in the room, and now we're over here on TED Talk, which is crazy. So guys, thank you so much for being here. Here's the TED Talk. What's up guys? It's over. My back hurts. I'm starving. I just smoked a joint. Marty? Same. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah guys, uh, the TED Talk is officially over. Somehow we ended up being the last people, but it was the perfect combination. Everybody in the crowd was our fans and or family or friends. Home field it, advantage around this motherfucker. It really was. We just Shout out your core you know for making it happen. Just Happy birthday. Out. TEDx. Oh damn. Uh, we might end this video another time. I have no idea what we're doing, but thank you so much. Dope as usual podcast 2023, starting strong, first TED Talk of the year.
Hey, what's up, guys? Thomas Dopaziola here. Whatever you want to call me, I'm here with my co-host, Marty O'Neill. What's up, guys? So, January 6, 2023, Marty and I were lucky enough, stoked enough, and honored to be able to do TED Talk. They asked us to come be speakers at their TED Talk, and the title was Money Never Stops. The concept was, if you lost every dollar you had, how would your skill set in the world of business bring you back to the level you're at? A lot of you guys know where we're from. You know our backgrounds. You know Marty and I very well. So, for us to be getting on stage at this prestigious TED Talk was unreal the whole crowd at the end was our fans and our family and friends it just home field advantage and thank you to everyone and anyone that showed up to support us in person we really did appreciate it it just made it that much more special seeing and hearing everybody chant and yell and just it was just an amazing experience thank you so much so with that being said this is our ted talk speech marty and i and this title is called definition of a hustler the moment I wrapped my mind around the theme of our talk tonight, I got really excited because I knew Thomas and I were a perfect fit for the topic. What qualities matter when starting from scratch in the digital age? The hustler, in context of a mentality, is at the core root of this question. As we knew him growing up, the hustler is simply somebody who can go outside with nothing and come back with something, be it opportunities, money, connections, more than he left with. Being a hustler can take on many meanings depending on what you're talking about, but no matter the context, the hustler is rare. On the grander scale, the hustler in his purest form is an ambitious entrepreneur, a self-starter who knows he's going to have to be the hardest worker around to get what he wants because his goals are so big. He expects it to take endurance. Most people think his goals are impossible. In the mind of the hustler, he's willing to sacrifice the comfortability of an ordinary life for the chance at having an amazing life. He prefers the one in a million odds because he's expecting that much out of himself. Society has always respected the hustler because of their ability or at least ambition to get what they want. We respect their ability to bounce back in the face of adversity, to keep pushing. We respect their ability to keep leveling up over time. The hustler signs up for an unorthodox life that requires dedication, self-motivation, and the willingness to adapt to the world around them. The hustler is confident, is persistent, is hands-on, in your face, planning, moving, connecting, building, anything, anything to get toward that long-term goal, whatever it may be. They stand out because they're willing to do the footwork that others aren't or would even think of doing. This was and still is the mentality of many immigrants coming to America. Get ahead with hard work by any means necessary. Thomas and I, and everyone born in the late 80s and early 90s, was part of the last generation of people who experienced childhood without the internet. Yet, we're lucky enough to be a part of the first generation of self-employed entrepreneurs creating careers and living our passions through digital media and the internet. We quite possibly may have been the last generation of kids that were out there pitching their neighbors to shovel snow, stack wood, cut lawns, rake leaves, paint fences. Nobody had to tell pre-internet kids to go do these things. It was just inherently in us to go outside and hustle. The internet changed the hustler forever. The mentality is not quite so inherent to today's generation of kids. As a father of three, I can attest to this. You can barely get them to go outside. There's not many kids vying for that local paper route anymore. The innate sense of desperation to go out and get after it isn't so built in like it was for our grandparents who were immigrants. The qualities of the hustler remain the same in order to be successful today, but the analog skills have gone digital. My grandparents are some of the hardest working people I know. When I was six years old, my grandpa Greg told me a story that I will never forget. See, he grew up in the jungle slash streets of Mexico. When he was just four years old, he told me his mom kicked him out. She couldn't pay for him. She couldn't afford it. They had too many kids. He had to get it on his own. So let's say my grandpa's hustle started early. He told me he would walk around killing snakes and there was a man in town that would buy them to make boots, hats, and wallets. That is the epitome of going outside with nothing and coming back with something. Also, all I asked for my grandpa was to buy me some candy, and then he dropped that bomb of a story on me. So years later, as a young man, he became one of the first Mexican citizens in America with a legal work visa. His work ethic and mentality took him from a place of hopelessness to a place of endless opportunity. Now, my parents grew up in a very different kind of jungle here in America, but this jungle was full of drugs, gangs, and generational depression. Welcome to Merced, California. See, my parents had my sister and I while they were still in high school. So growing up, we were poor, really poor by American standards. But my mom and dad showed me firsthand what hard work is, especially my mom. 
She raised us. She was a single mother, multiple jobs, just trying to make it work, still trying to go to college. It inspired me, honestly. It molded me. It screamed out to me, never give up even when you have nothing. Growing up without will light a fire inside you, I promise. You have to get up and make something happen. So I too decided I need my own hustle if I was going to do anything with my life. I was tired of going on school trips and being the only kid without money to eat. I was done. It was not going to keep happening. So as a high schooler, I decided to go into business for myself. From ages 14 to 22, I supplied my entire area with weed. And let me tell you, that business took off fast. But also, I can't tell you how many nerve-wracking, nail-biting trips I've taken. 100 pounds in my trunk on the I-5, hands 10 and 2 on the wheel, scanning for highway patrol, praying that I make it home. And if not, I was at home, praying that my door didn't get kicked down by task force. It was a constant state of paranoia. And for what? to make a couple thousand dollars but at the time it all did seem worth it for a kid that grew up wanting something but expecting nothing those few stacks in my pocket that was me feeling security for the first time in my life but after years and years just going through the motions selling this selling that i was introduced to a wonderful thing called instagram and it was there that i found something it was something that i'll forever be grateful for and that was the online cannabis community Until this point, I had only used my phone to make sales. I don't play around online. I don't post pictures. But it was there that I found my calling. Making funny pictures and videos, making people laugh, making them smile, and it involves weed. You can count me in. But eventually, my social media falling got so massive, I had to make a hard decision. I had to change my hustle. I had to evolve. I knew I couldn't keep getting lucky on those road trips forever. One day, I would get popped. So I decided to give up all the easy money that I've been so accustomed to and I bet on myself in this completely uncertain and uncharted space of full-time content creation. Now this meant my girlfriend Rosie and I go broke. There's no more easy money coming in, but the bills are still coming in. And we realized very early on that we're fighting an uphill battle in terms of censorship from YouTube and other platforms. Top creators on YouTube are generating hundreds of millions of dollars every year in ad revenue. Although I'm one of the more watched creators on the platform now, I do not get paid by YouTube. I don't get any money. And this is just due to the explicit nature of my videos. I do unreal challenges, high production product reviews, in-depth adventures into the world of cannabis. And despite being in the red for years and years on production costs, editing, and time, I still cranked out tons of content every single week for free. I did this because one, I love it. I really do love doing this. And two, I saw the long-term value in building an authentic, dedicated following. Somewhere people could feel safe, comfortable, not looked down upon. As long as I stayed true to myself and I gave back to my community by genuinely engaging with them, providing content that adds value to their lives, content that keeps them company when they have no one to turn to, just being a virtual friend. I knew in my heart that I was on the right path to fulfilling my purpose in life, spreading laughter and positivity. But despite all the views on all the different platforms, there was still a lot of uncertainty in terms of whether or not I can make this a career. Now, I'm not sure if they actually put this on the advertisement for the event tonight or not, but you're looking at here in front of you, the highest percentage three-point shooter in NCAA Division II college basketball history. One shot, one make. 1,000% from beyond the arc is how I like to put it. And after my freshman year of college basketball, during spring training for the following season, after I had obsessed over basketball every day of my life since seventh grade, I had a sick feeling in the pit of my stomach. It said, you know you're not going to the NBA, right? You know it doesn't matter how much you practice, right? Basketball is not going to save you. I watched all the seniors from the year before who were way more athletic than I could ever dream of being. They graduated and their basketball careers were just over. So at 18, I went from being on the dean's list, getting scholarship money to go to college, to dropping out of school, quitting basketball forever, and eventually living out the plot of the movie 8 Mile. My cousin had given me my first ever computer. I taught myself how to record music and make promo graphics and Photoshop, and it was off to the races from there. The hustle began. From that point, for the next 10 years, I dedicated all of myself to music. Eight-hour trips back and forth to New York City in the same day in my dad's old green station wagon just to take trips and pick up a couple of CDs, countless closed doors, so many amazing situations that seemed like they were going to lead somewhere incredible but really just kind of got my hopes up and led nowhere. Thousands of dollars on studio time and production and lawyers, all the while we were basically flat broke. 
me going into all the little corner stores and the most dangerous parts of the city with my boxes of mixtapes, selling the mixtapes to the customers in line before I got to the counter and sold the mixtapes to the dude at the counter, pitching myself to anybody that would listen, the epitome of the hustler, expecting a one in a million deal. It was the only way I could see to not have a life of mediocrity. Even at that young age, I knew I had to define in my mind what my finish line was. And I did, and it was simple. I have to be my own boss in life. I want to wake up excited without worrying about money. I want to be able to do whatever I want with my time. I realized early on that it benefited me to be able to benefit other people in my industry, meaning I could trade graphics for production and beats. I could get paid to record and mix other people's music in my mom's basement. I could record little music videos for other artists and then eventually businesses. After a while, this morphed into me being a freelance graphic designer, going by the name Drastic Graphics. From mixtape covers and party flyers, I started soliciting small businesses locally, and eventually, all around the world, after I figured out how to hustle on the internet, anybody that would hire me. This gave me a wide variety of different experiences in different industries and different styles. In 2013, I realized my first giant milestone of a dream, which was moving my family out of Buffalo to Southern California. I had a record deal, and by all accounts, was on the verge of realizing my goals I had set out for when I quit college and decided to be an artist. And that's when I realized I had to scale it all back and go in a totally different direction. After a year of being in California, I finally got something I had been hoping for the entire time I was grinding away at music, real opportunity to put my creative skills to use. Drastic Graphics had been a side hustle up to that point, but I was finally given real opportunity and I knew I had to swallow my pride, put the brakes on music totally, and went full Drastic Graphics mode for the next 10 years. I paved the lane behind the scenes in the world of stand-up comedy and built a reputation for myself based on all the principles of The Hustler. I had long ago quit my nine to fives, working miserable dead-end jobs just to get by. I built up a roster of loyal clients under Drastic Graphics, moved into a beautiful studio in Orange County, and brought on a team. Again, on the surface, it appeared I had made it. All the hustling had paid off. The finish line had been reached. And that's when I realized I had to scale it all back and go in a totally different direction. I had been watching Thomas's videos ever since I had first met him way back when I first moved to California. I held the camera for him when he filmed one of his early Vine clips. Fast forward a couple years later, I'm watching him on YouTube and heard him mention he wanted to start a podcast and instantly my mind shot into the future and saw what we could be if we combined forces. Now, fast forward three years later, and with just Marty and I across our three YouTube channels, we've been able to amass over 2.5 billion minutes of watch time, over 200 million views, and less than 500 videos. More importantly, with the Dope As Usual podcast, we found a way to cross over into the mainstream and parlay our fan base into different business ventures. This is the goal for the modern hustler online. You can look at both of our individual stories and see it took nearly a decade for all the pieces to align until the timing was perfect for something great to happen. In terms of what's valuable to an online creator, watch time is king. It is one thing to pique someone's interest into checking out your latest work, but it's another thing into keeping someone's interest while watching your latest work and then leave them wanting more. Massive corporations invest millions and millions of dollars into shows, pilots, ads, commercials, hoping to achieve the one thing Marty and I have been able to, just by working in our warehouse, having fun. The playing field has never been more level for creative entrepreneurs. And how? There are two key personality types that are valuable when it comes to online creatives. But when combined with the hustler's mentality, this could be unstoppable. I like to consider myself a digital Swiss Army knife. This encompasses video recording, editing, photography, brand design and graphic design, audio recording, mixing, set design, lighting, web design, SEO, social media management, and targeted advertising. It's traditionally thought of for people to be a specialist in any one of these things. Get a degree as an audio engineer or a graphic designer or a cameraman and have that be your career. But what I found is that in digital media, to the modern artist, it's one big creative muscle. For me, I specialized in graphic design, got my degree in it, built a career and a business around it. But had I not continued to keep adding on valuable skills year after year afterward, I would have missed out on many of the best opportunities of my life, stunted my growth as an entrepreneur, and missed out on my finish line. 
It's great to be a specialist, but by studying and then immersing yourself into each of these different areas one by one each year, after a while you become an asset to everyone in the space, which is how you build relationships, business, and overall leverage in this digital world. Having hustled each of these skills individually, seeking out projects in different industries, getting paid, getting referred, developing a system for it, I know I always have something to fall back on should things go south with the podcast and our other businesses. If I lose everything, I can always go out and stir up business if I need to because there's so many different niches I can tap into with these skills. I can apply them to my local real estate industry or restaurants and cafes, or the fitness industry, the auto industry. There's an unlimited number of niches is online and locally I can dig into until I find clients. When we think of the power for personality, and if this is in line with you, it's all about creating from a place of what do you love? What are you good at? What adds value to others? Now, this can take form in many different ways. It could be something inspiring, something that makes people laugh, or something positive, anything, anything to change up the normal pace of people's lives. It can be fun being the star of your own show, but you have to be resilient. I've been deleted off Instagram 27 times, 3.9 million followers total. In fact, the night we were set to hit a million subscribers on YouTube without any strikes, no warnings, after years and years of posting, YouTube deleted my entire channel. But in that moment, I knew it didn't even matter. The connection that I established with my community was so strong, it was so deep that I knew I could bring it right back. Also in that moment, I knew what it felt like to start from scratch. I also got to see how I would react to it. I didn't freak out. I didn't panic. I just said, I'm going to come back even stronger. For years, I was fighting against the grain, just trying to get paid for my content. But all that did was make me realize I needed to yet again transform my hustle. I needed to find a way to generate revenue to keep pumping out my content. So in 2013, I started my clothing company, Push Trees. In 2021, we started an alternative cannabinoid company, The Dopest Shop. Both of these companies are well-oiled machines and they stand on their own. And this is all due to the deep connection that we have with our fan base. Right now, I'm gonna give you three steps that I would take to solidify the connection with your fan base. And remember, this is something you can't buy. Step one, listen to your audience. Truly care. Care about what they got to say. Respond. Commenting is free. DMing is free. It may take you a few minutes, but those few minutes might make someone's day. And always remember, you represent each other. Step two, be transparent. The worst thing you could possibly do is lose the trust of your audience. Not everything is a slam dunk. Not every day is a win. If you mess up, own up to it. We are all human. It takes years to build a trust of your audience, but only a few seconds to lose it. Step number three, this is something I like to call the 50-50 rule. 50% of your content should be coming what the fans ask, what they want to see from you. It might be something fun, something trendy, but as long as you stay true to your own style while trying to cater to your fans, it could be a perfect combination. The other 50% of your content should be coming from what you want to do. There's a reason you're doing this. There's a reason you have an audience. I'm weird. Other weird people found my content. Now they have somewhere to come where they feel normal. Stay authentic, stay true to yourself, and you'll have fans for life. Think about it. In less than 50 years, we went from Thomas's grandfather finding his own way as a child in the jungles and streets of Mexico to Forbes doing a full-length feature article on his grandson, who, at 32, is already a 10-year veteran of professionally smoking weed on camera. Could he ever foresee a scenario like this where his grandson could create an entire self-sustaining industry around his passions and personality? So much so that he's able to put his friends and family into positions where they too can be their own bosses if that's the path they choose. In my mind, I would consider that to be a finish line, a massive milestone that you set out for at the beginning of your journey. But then once you do reach that level and have the ability to not only have financial freedom for your own self, but to be able to put others in the position to do the same, once you cross that chasm and reach that next level you've been striving for all your life, you climb that rope all the way up to the top of the mountain, you pull yourself up and look around and realize it's just another mountain with another rope. The grind never stops when you sign up to be a hustler. Once you reach that first finish line, a whole new marathon begins with a new set of goals that are in line with your current position. Even bigger and badder now, because once you conquer that first mountain, you know for sure it can be done. You can set out and do what seems impossible to other people. So no matter what unique path you choose to go down, keep the qualities of the hustler alive inside of yourself. Don't let them get too diluted down by our comfortable lifestyles. Push yourself out of that comfort zone. Every year, add a new skill that furthers you or makes you progress in your career. 
Define what your finish line is. Always create from a place of giving to your community. And trust that over time, the path to your finish line will reveal itself to you through hard work and dedication. Now, podcasting didn't even exist when we started on our individual journeys, but we kept the faith, we trusted the process, and we kept pushing. And we encourage you all to do the same. Thank you very much. Have a dope-ass day.